All right, guys, so I've been a challenger player for over five years now, and Kale is one of the champions I've used to climb in challenger. In this video today, I will be covering the runes, build, skill order, and summoner spells, as well as laning phase, mid late game, team fighting, and a gameplay commentary. Now, to start off with the runes, there are currently three rune pages I recommend in season 12. The first rune page is Lethal Tempo as the main keystone, with both plate and overgrowth in the secondary page. This rune page makes Kale incredibly strong during laning phase and you want to pick this against champions that have no mobility. The second rune page I recommend is PDA with bone plate and overgrowth. This is very similar to the first rune page, however this page is picked for more damage and burst. You want to pick this rune page against any top laner with huge mobility. The third rune page I recommend is once again very similar to the first rune page, however this rune page includes second wind which allows you to tank up damage early and heal from it. This page is always picked into hard poking matchups in lane. As for the bonus stats, you always want to put one point into attack speed, one point into adaptive force, and another point into armor or magic resistance, depending on the matchup you're up against. If you don't know what you're facing, go with health scaling instead. Now, moving on to the builds, starting off with the starter items first, you always want to pick Doran's Ring with two pots into any kind of matchup that allows you to poke. A Doran's Ring gives you great sustain during laning phase, however, if you can't reach out to your opponent with your QRE, this is where you want to go with a Doran's Blade instead. A Dorn's Blade is perfect if you are looking for a strong laning phase and it's also good because you don't have to rely on poking your opponent for the full sustain either. If you aren't really sure what to pick then Dorn's Blade will always do fine. As for boots, you typically want to run Berserker's Griefs every single game. This will be your first go-to item before you get one of your core items. If you are facing off a hard matchup in top lane and play against a full AD team comp, that's where I'd recommend going for steel caps instead. And lastly, if you happen to face off a hard AP top laner and play against full AP team comps with a lot of CC, this is where I would recommend Mercs instead. As for the core build, you always want to build Nash's Tooth into Riftmaker. You will build this every single game, no matter what matchup. Then afterwards, your main full build will include a Rabidant with Azania and Void Staff in it. The second main build is more situational. This includes a rapid fire cannon and is usually picked into team comps that you cannot reach out for with your auto attacks. If you build rapid fire cannon, this will allow you to fight from far away without having to take risks. The third build I recommend is against AP team comps. Wits End provides a ton of damage and gives you magic resistance as well. The fourth build I recommend is an AD version of Kale. You want to build AD killing games where your entire team is based on AP. Now lastly, the fifth build is very similar to the fourth one, however this one includes a Gale Force in it. And it's usually being picked into enemy team comps with a large amount of mobility. Now, you also have a few situational items, however, those items are only used in a few specific games and are almost never used. Now, for the skill order, you want to max your E, then your Q, and then your W every single game. And for the summoner spells, you want to go with TP and Flash. Now moving on to the laning phase, Kale is one of the strongest champions in the game right now, however, also one of the weakest during laning phase. In the first 6 levels, you want to play as safe as possible and try and keep the wave around your turret for as long as you can. Simply farm up using your abilities and try to punish your opponent with your abilities whenever they try to farm. When you reach level 6, you will unlock the ranged form and this is the turning point. Look into building up your creep wave and push this directly into your opponent. The bigger the wave is, the better. This will allow you to poke your opponent safely and in case of potential all-ins, the creep wave will help you in fight and allow you to win. This way, you can poke super easily and win lane. This is the biggest strength of playing kill top lane. 
When playing Kale in the mid late game, you want to split on the side lanes as much as possible. Make sure your teleport is up while doing this. Kale is incredibly strong at split pushing because of her damage and insane clear speed. So focus at pushing and farming jungle camps at, at the same time. If your teleport is down, you still want to split push and create advantages on the side lanes. However, if your objectives like dragons or baron shows up, make sure to stay close as you don't want to miss out on that team fight. When it comes down to playing kill in team fights, it's extremely important to focus on doing the most damage possible, but also taking the least damage from the enemies. So you simply want to move up, throw your damage to the closest enemy, and then fall back again until you have better opportunities. Remember that Kel is a champion that can shred all champions in the game, including tanks, super easily, so use that to your advantage. Also keep in mind that Kale is a super weak champion in terms of receiving the damage and that's why it matters on the way how you position in teamfights. Now with everything said, let's get into a gameplay commentary and I will teach you guys exactly on how to play Kale top lane. Alright guys, today I'm going to teach you guys how to play Kale top lane in season 12. So. What you want to run right now is a lethal tempo. You want to take presence of mind with alacrity and cut the grass. And we are also running the bone plate with overgrowth this game. So we are also running a Dorn's Ring into this matchup because we can quite easily um, poke this Scion for the sustain. So it's going to run pretty well. Um, Dorn's Plate would have also been an, a great option here, to be honest. Now, in case you guys have, you know, been following the entire guide, um, I'm just going to explain this a little bit more about laning phase. So, you want to play very, very safe in the pre-6. This is incredibly important. Like, the more damage you take throughout the early couple levels, basically the harder this lane is going to be. So, for the most part, we want to avoid as much as we can. The reason why... It's because if you do this well, if you can play very, very safe in the pre-6 and you can get your hands on the Berserker's Grease before your first back, um, it's going to give you a huge power spike, right? And at the same time, while playing very safe right now and trying to avoid the damage, we also have the wave basically pushing towards us, right? And this is going to be great for two reasons. Firstly, we can farm safely, and that's exactly what Kel needs. And secondly... We can set up the lane quite easily for ganks as well. So it's like two in one. Sion is a champion that has a lot of difficulty being able to uh, escape from the ganks. So it's only going to be working in our favor here. Fortunately, though, we did miss like a lot of farm. I'm very happy with this. And now we go for Yolan. Pop the potion while you're fighting, guys. I can't, like, shush out enough on how important this is. And he's gonna die. Yep. Um, also, do not pressure E too early on as much as you guys want to. The lower HP your opponent is, the more damage you can do with your E. So, you want to be saving it for the most part until he's low enough. The only thing that kind of worries me at the moment is that we've been missing some of the farm, but it's not going to mess around with us too much this game. It's going to charge the Q into us. Sure. It's definitely okay to take some damage right now if that means that we can push out the lane, because all we're looking for right now is being able to reset this lane here. Um, we also have Telia here, but the gank isn't working. That's not working, so... Unless... Okay, this guy's running it down. And we got him. So originally, I was not planning out on killing Sion right here. It would definitely never work. But what kind of surprised me is that he actually all linked my jungler. Okay, more kills. Kills are like running towards me this time. <laughs> Unbelievable. Alright, cool. So yeah, we were, we have, I was definitely not planning out on like killing Sion right here and the jungler, but they literally just walk into my jungler and try and kill him. 
And even though my Jonar does actually die for it, it's actually very worth for me. And I'm going to show you why this is. This lane is pretty much over already. Watch this. Now, instead of teleporting, we're just going to walk ourselves back to lane. Because Sion needs a lot of time to clear this out. Now, as soon as we reach level 6, this lane is an instant win. And I'm going to show you why this is. So right now we have Berserker's Grease, we have the attack speed, and we have the movement speed. Right now, as soon as we reach level 6, we can use the movement speed, use the Berserker's Grease to my advantage. Because this guy doesn't have the boots yet, which means I can completely, like, out-kite him. So this is where we're about to reach it. Need one more, though. Me, let me see if I can hold this here for a bit. And here we go. So right now, the entire playstyle is going to change. Instead of like focusing on freezing down the wave, we are going to actively like start stacking the wave now so we can use that to poke Sion. Now let's try. It's fine. We have the level 6 advantage. And here we go. And we got him. So you see like what lethal tempo is capable of doing. She might flash. Okay. Lethal tempo on Kale currently is just outstanding. In case you've been like missing out, like lethal tempo allows you to win lanes, which were very, very hard in the past. You know, Sion was one of those champs which once you try and kite it, um, he would always land the Q on you. But nowadays, if you have lethal tempo on Kale, you can basically outrange the Sion and have an incredibly easy time against him. I'm going to go back to base. So the first item that I always highly encourage you guys doing... Wait a second... Okay. Interesting. So the first item that I always recommend you guys getting is always going to be the Recurve Bow. Regardless of like what matchup. Unless you're into a really hard matchup, you could go for Seekers Arm Guard, but that's like almost never. So Berserker's Crease will be always be your first item. And after that, always a Recurve Bow. Reason why is because Kale depends on attack speed and on hit, okay? And if you can, get this one as well, as quickly as you can. Like a combination. Is treason. Treason so we're back in lane. Death. We still have the TP. We didn't have to use it because he doesn't get a he didn't get a plate. Okay. And now we're gonna place a ward down inside the bush. And I'm definitely expecting Sion to be chilling here somewhere. Um, their jungler, Diana, is currently sitting in, in at the Drake right now. So we don't have to worry about her. I'm just going to kind of start hard pushing down this wave. But I do want to take it a little bit more slow. Because I want to be stacking up the wave. The bigger the wave is, guys. The more you can stack the wave. The harder you can win the lane. You know, just for the fact that you have the wave completely stacked. Gives you a huge advantage. Now we hard push this one because there is the next wave arriving here. He's obviously going to try to stop it, but it's definitely not working for him. As long as he's standing outside of the range, we can just hit the tower instead. He's going to charge Q here. We have uh, Talia taking the Herald right now, so... Now we just push it. And that's going to push into the tower. She doesn't have to force it. Just getting the tower itself is fine enough. 
get another plate. And the Herald will also get another one. We're also getting Singe of top lane at the moment. But yeah, you can kind of get the hang of like how Kel top lane works. Um, the pre-6 is just a lane where you just farm up. You don't do anything aside from like setting up ganks. And once you like make it past level 6, it's all about stacking waves and getting the proper um, the, the proper setup. Are you hard for shit? So even without my teammates right now, I'd still be winning out the lane very hard. All I have to do is just stack up the wave and just kind of down. It's pretty straightforward. Now let's go back. The first item is always going to be a Nash's Tooth. Regardless of what you're facing. This, this is the main core item. And what you want to get next is always going to be a Rift Maker. And we're also going to get a Blue Trinket. So this time I'm going to path towards mid lane. And as we move up there, I will push down the wave and then we're going to go back top lane and start pressuring once again. So We just hard push it. We have no intention of fighting this Akali at the moment. All we want to do is just get this wave out. Also, there was a fight right there. Not sure why they take it. All I'm interested in is just getting the wave out. And then going back topside. Oh, apparently this thing coming here from, uh, Ed from Kaisa. And we take this one to be a little bit more efficient. He's going to try to cue me here. Oh, yep, pretty classic. Once again, we don't have to fight him. All we have to do is just push down the wave, and I'll show you why. Perfect. Now, this time, we're going to move up to the jungle camp, and I'm going to see if I can take that full myself. Thank you. Another advantage we have here. So now we have proper vision inside the river as well. We don't really uh, see... Okay, Diana just showing up for a second so we can fight him. Okay. I'm going to force him because we have a Singer topside. And we got him. So yeah, you can kind of get the idea about kill top lane. Um, even if Sion misses the Q, we can simply sidestep it, and then we can just kite down Sion pretty easily. Especially with lethal tempo, it's just impossible to, to like, get to Kale, And that's the advantage about playing Kale with lethal tempo over PDA. It's pretty crazy what you're able to do. You know, certain matchups, you become untouchable. Like, they can't even get to you anymore, and that's the beauty. Yeah, let's try. We're poked that down. Okay, so Sion coming topside. We walk this way so that Sion is unable to reach out to me. And we simply walk around. And then we start fighting Akali again. So you, we are constantly pressuring these guys. We want the enemy team to 1v2 us basically so that we can waste our time right so once again Sion is probably walking around like he is now as crazy as it sounds we can easily kill Akali because we're like three levels ahead already because we're consistently uh Barely making any mistakes, we fully rely on like farming and getting the catches, and that's gonna give us a lead by default. Because we're constantly farming the camps down. Now we push the next wave down. Science over here. We can do this and more of the wave now. Now we can get this one. 
We don't have vision, so we cannot continue to push it, even though I want to. I do have problems doing it. Maybe we can pull it off like this. There we go. We're close to the tower. And now we can go back to base once again, and this time go for a Rift Maker. And this is pretty much where the game is over. Like, good luck trying to stop a, a Kale with like 5 kills and 140 CS right now. We're too strong for them. I'm going to TP bot lane. I'm not going to waste any time walking topside right now. We're just going to be forcing bot lane. And we'll see if we can kill this Kai'Sa and Pike. And Drake is also coming right now, so that's going to be quite a free one as well. This guy tries to do something, but obviously we are way too strong. Nice try. We got another one, so now we continue pushing it. Not bad. And we go down to these camps. Could probably get some more catches. Yeah, that's a that's a free one. Sure. And now we go back to pushing. So yeah, you can kind of get the idea now. That tower is ours. I'm not gonna stand near it. I'm just gonna take more camps down if I can. Or yeah, I'm gonna push another one. This time, I'm only interested in the farm. I'm not going to push down the wave. And we go down to the jungle camps. I kind of want to take this wave down. Yeah, we're going to move over this one. Wait a second... So yeah, you can kind of get the idea. There isn't really that much happening in the game right now. So I'm farming out everything that I can find. Even though I am currently not in bot lane. We still hold the pressure. Because we're farming everything at once. And this will only make us once again stronger. I can in theory just kill her right now. You see the damage? Right? Like this is boy. Kale is capable of doing. And yeah, she's dead. So yeah, Kale, guys, I can't tell you enough. Kale is such an overpowered champion. I've been I've been using this champion so much on my on my climb in uh, in Challenger man. Like usually she uh, like Kale has been my my second main for quite a while now, for years, and it honestly pays off pretty well. You know all the time I spend into playing this champ. You know it's very good for obvious reasons. Let's go back to base once again, and this time we're gonna go for Rabbits. There we go. And we're going to be moving back top lane. Okay. That's going to be another massive team fight, and we're definitely going to win that for sure. Easily. We are too far ahead of everyone at the moment, so good luck, like, stopping me here. These guys are fighting. It really does not matter. I know it sounds crazy that my team just died here, but it doesn't matter, guys. Trust me. Because you will see why. There's an Akali sitting on the back here. And I'm assuming that they're doing the Herald now. Which is honestly fine. I, don't, I certainly don't mind. Because once again, I get every camp for myself, so... We got that. There's this guy over here. I can't really overextend into Kaisa because I think that there's other people nearby, so we are going to have to let that go for at least for now. You're coming with me. Dead or alive. 
And we go back, ball lane again. So we're just going to keep pressuring like this. We already have 232 CS at like 20 minutes in the game. And each second that we play, it's going to, it's only getting better. So... Uh, there's a guy here. They definitely have vision on me for sure. We're about to reach level 6 very soon. Not sure what that's for, but good luck stopping me here. In theory, I can basically backport now. I can get my uh, stopwatch and... Oh, he almost died as well. <laughs> Alright, sure. Okay, so we're gonna go for Zanias now. Uh, we can go for this one. And we can sell my Dorn's Ring just fine now. In theory, we don't even need Stopwatch, if I'm truly honest. I think that we're definitely going to be fine even without Stopwatch. Um, but I don't want to take the risk. You see, like, I can in theory just go for, for this one now. And it's going to help me a ton, but... Just to make sure, I'm going to go for stopwatch. Because you never know what's going to happen. And I might be able to tank up, like, an entire pipe because of that. So let's push top side. That's going to be a fight of Drake soon. We're finally level 16 right now, so... This is where things take a turn. There we go. That's a guy right here. I think it's a guy that walks this way. Yep. Doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. I certainly don't mind. Hmm. He's not really jumping into me, though. Oh, I got you. They can't really catch me as much as they like. <laughs> Good luck. Hmm. Okay, so they actually end up getting me at some point. Well, sure. Yeah, you can kind of see where this game is struggling now. It's not necessarily on our part, even though we can just push a lane, and that's definitely going to to um, allow us to finish up the game. I've been trying to, like, catch people here while they're fighting for the dragon, but uh, it didn't really work out so far. The only keep to like the only thing to like to like keep in consideration is that my team is having a very, very bad time at the moment. Like, these guys are really far behind so let's push mid lane now all i need my team to do is, is grouping mid lane as five and that's gonna do the job here we should be able to win super easily without any effort once again scion pushing top lane sure Seems like he's roaming down some mid. There's Scion here. It's going to be a free one. Yep. Got him. So, all we have to do is just pushing, uh, getting the Baron, and that's him. Oh, there's this guy here. Doesn't matter. Not happening. Now we go for Baron. Yeah, 
And then we start pushing mid. Here we go. The team doesn't really have to reset. This will be fine. This guy can't do much. <laughs> we can kill anything from super far away with this build. That's the beauty. Nice try. And this time we're going to push top lane, so... Oh, she's not all inning me. I expect her to all in me, actually. Oh, nice try, Sion. Yeah, I honestly expected her to be all inning me, but it ended up like she didn't do it, so... Yep, let's try. And that's it. So, this is how you play kill top lane. I hopefully this guide has helped for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, you know, today's guide. And I will see you guys in the next one. So, peace.